Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar by LPA covering what can Clyde do for your business. LPA was founded in 2001. We're headquartered in Rochester, New York with offices in Dallas, Houston, Charlotte, and we have consultants throughout the United States. We're currently serving over 200 clients in covering all spectrums from enterprise to mid-market, including OEMs, and we do implementations for all. We, we're rapidly growing at 40 new clients year over year, and over 80% of our customers come back to us for follow-on business. We are definitely in the business of long-term relationships and partner. We cover a variety of industry industries, including healthcare, hospitality, manufacturing, retail, financial services, and many others. We are one of IBM's premier business partners. And what this is, is their top classification that they put in their partner community, top 6% to be specific. 100% of our consultants are certified and they average over 10 years of experience, ranging from various technologies from data warehousing to predictive analytics to business intelligence and financial, financial perform, performance management. We were a 2013 IBM Beacon Award finalist, and we were the go-to partner for IBM from lab services due to our in broad industry knowledge and deep industry practitioners. Many of us are former clients. So let's talk a bit about LPA's business offerings. You know, we, it, we actually span the entire business analytics spectrum. If your organization is new to analytics just getting started, LPA can help with offerings such as BI strategy and roadmap development, readiness assessments, and business case development, creating ROIs for the required investment in analytics. As we pro progress to data warehousing and big data, LPA's expertise is in dimensional modeling, as we are an Ateza or pure data reseller, and we have extensive experience building data warehouses and work, have worked with a wide variety of different ETO tools. To add business intelligence on top of your data warehouse, LPA specializes in Cognos BI. We offer BI health checks on existing implementations, upgrades, software development kit, or SDK, and so security integration with existing portals or other legacy applications in your enterprise. LPA's training offerings are second to none. Extremely high quality at a competitive price point, student training materials are customized using your data. Moving forward to the performance management space, we specialize in building planning and budgeting based turnkey solutions using IBM Cognos Team 1 complemented by migrations, upgrades, and training in this space as well. Continuing down the analytics spectrum, LPA has offerings in the advanced analytics space, such as location analytics using Esri Maps, as we are a reseller for our GIS online and Esri tools. We also offer an accelerated jumpstart offering to get you up and running quickly using Esri Maps for Cognos to enable special selection and reports, add heat maps, and other geospatial components to reports. In the predictive space, we offer the full spectrum of SPSS project services to enable your organization to leverage predictive analytics. Across this entire spectrum, LPA is an authorized reseller for IBM business analytics software, including licenses and renewals. Many of our customers partner with us to help them make sure they have the right configuration and right footprint for their needs. So what's today's agenda? Uh, very high level. We're going to co cover what is cloud. There's many different, talk to many different people that have different definitions for what cloud means. Um, kind of go over some terminology of uh, cloud. It's an education session today. And we'll go over some benefits and options for cloud computing. IBM analytics in the cloud as well. So what are some of these options? So what is the definition of cloud computing? Many people have different thoughts. Um, so we reached out to the, we figure the experts in the space, both Gartner and Forrester. Gartner defines the cloud computing as a style of computing in which scalable and elastic IT enabled capabilities are delivered as a service using internet technologies. Forrester defines it, you know, as a standardized IT capability, including services, software, 
in infrastructure delivered via internet technologies in a pay-per-use self-service way. So what are some of the key benefits for cloud? Well, you got a lower t t total cost of ownership. Um, and this is because your organization no longer needs to staff uh, an IT department to constantly monitor, manage, and maintain servers. It's all handled off-site. Um, you're able to minimize capital IT investments because you don't have to lay out high amounts of cash up front to buy hardware, um, infrastructure, and those types of things. Instead, you pay on a monthly basis. You know, you've actually got a monthly recurring revenue. Um, and you can also, you know, faster time to market. Why? Why is it faster time to market? It's because these cloud environments can be provisioned in hours. It doesn't take days or weeks to set them up. And it actually gets your solution out quicker. You cloud environments can be standardized and scaled easily, moving historical IT complexity such as processor cap capacity, memory allocation, and network bandwidth. You provide providing these standard environments to your end users, they are more productive. And also standardizing these environments with a common model, your IT assets can be consolidated. So cloud computing, it's been around for six decades. It's, you know, it's been evolving over time. So why is now the time? We're in the year 2015. It's been around for so long. Why now? What's going on? We did a little bit of background. So Mark Andreessen was a co-author of Mosaic. For those of you like myself that, you know, been around the, been around the world for a little while, um, Mosaic was the first widely used web browser. And Mark Andreessen was also the co-founder of Netscape which back in the early days was one of the first internet browsers. Well, he basically said the reason cloud computing is growing at such a fast pace is that we have a quote unquote perfect storm of technology. This allows us to deliver any device, solutions that are run and managed centrally. The processors, the network, the internet, they all combine with the proliferation of a mobile device and have created this perfect storm, which has made cloud computing market explode. Cloud computing has enabled the availability of these apps on a mobile device, and in doing so, has made our lives as consumers very, very productive. A couple examples. You know, we never, we no longer go to a video store to rent a movie. We actually stream it online to Netflix. We rarely ever go to our bank to deposit a physical check. Instead, we, many of us use our bank application, we take a picture of the front and back of the check and deposit it with our iPhone. Cab drivers are now using iPhones to run credit card transactions on the road with instant access to my receipt. How great is that? Cloud computing has enabled the availability of these apps on my mobile device and in the process has made my life a consumer so much more productive. I save time by having all these apps at my fingertips. So what do you think will happen when I go to work? Hmm. Well, I will expect the same level of productivity in my professional life as I get in my personal life. Think about if your applications at work were to, you were able to get that kind of information as quickly as you do Instagram or Twitter. Very quickly, right? Well, I would find it very unproductive if I was only able to have access to my messaging and collaboration system when I'm at my office on my desktop. Instead, I want to be able to send an email when I have an idea standing in line at Starbucks. Or I want to be able to track my sales numbers for the day when I come out of the gym at night. I want to be able to submit my expense reports from my backyard on Sunday morning with a good cup of coffee. I want real time, both mobile and social. So whenever I go to my office and I don't have the same level of productivity as I do in my personal life, what do I do? Well, simply put, I've requested technology to make me more productive. So the world's obviously changing. The cloud is changing the way the work gets done. By having all this, these tools at your fingertips quickly, you have a, you know, IT is able to quickly deliver a considerable hybrid cloud environment. You know, like we were talking about, quickly revision, boom, IT has it up. 
And so what happens is your application developers, they're able to get in there and play and do what they love to do to create the next killer app by rapidly assembling all these cloud services. And in turn, your business leaders are able to use it instantaneously. And they want the, you know, it's quick, it's easy, and it's fast to use. And the customers are expected by tapping in the cloud devices. So this is all collaborative because, you know, your users are able to use it faster. Your application developer gives you feedback to the application developers, which in turn works in hand in hand with your IT. And it's a very synergetic environment. So a lot of leading organizations are using cloud to gain a competitive advantage. According to the results of a new IBM Global Cloud study titled Under Cloud Cover, pace setters are using cloud to accelerate their competitive differentiation through strategic reinvention, better decisions, and deeper collaboration. Cloud allows them to serve customers in new ways and reimagine their business models. This means three things specifically you as a business. You engage faster and learn faster with customers. Build and test new apps. Fail quickly and learn from your success. Analytics are more widely used as they are easily delivered, shared to wider users, and allowing shared best practices and insights. Third, getting outside your firewall or servers, it opens up the opportunity for collaboration with suppliers and partners. This was virtually impossible with many on-premise systems. The cloud opens up an entirely new avenue for knowledge sharing. So there's three different kinds of cloud types. Let's kind of go over. The first one is, you know, public cloud. Second, is a you know, a public cloud is, you know, somewhere everybody's able to see data stored at work. Private cloud is Obviously, something stored on the internet, and you've got it only in your own little world. Only you can see it. And then the third type is a hybrid of these two. Okay? So, we'll go through a couple different examples, right? So, starting on the public spectrum of it. You know, many of you know Amazon. Very profitable, very successful company. Uh, many years ago, Amazon started off as a, an internet website selling books. So they were actually found, you know, very foundation started with e-commerce. So as they expanded from selling books, they started selling everything they do now. They were building out a tremendous amount of infrastructure. As always, when you're doing that, you need to be, be able to build for peak load. Think about Black Friday. Think of what Amazon does on Black Friday. For Amazon, peak load was holiday seasons obviously October through December. The other nine months were much, you know, left untapped. They decided to provision out, you know, their infrastructure, including CPUs, RAM, storage, and those types of networking equipment into a utility model to where people could pay for what they consume. Basically, they were loaning, you know, renting out their space and their infrastructure space on their non-peak times. Amazon has a very large shared pool of resources that make it easy for the solution to be elastic. If you need more, you add more. When you no longer need it, you can remove it. This example actually serves two points. First, it shows that it resonates with the point earlier that most capacity is left untapped. Amazon realized this. Instead of taking a loss like most, they decided to turn their potential loss into a revenue stream. Second, it serves as a great example of a public cloud. They have an enormous amount of resources, data centers full of processors, memory, storage, and networking that can be leveraged on demand in a public cloud model. If you were to use, you would consume only a fraction of the resources. And you are not dedicated resources per se. The resources are elastic and fluctuate based on upon your demand. You only pay for what you consume. consume. Okay, so on the other side of the spectrum is you have a private cloud. As noted, this solution is dedicated to you, all resources at all times with access to resources limited to only your company. 
In a private cloud, you have a specific amount of resources. This can be internally owned and operated or managed by you, or have dedicated servers provisioned through an infrastructure provider such as a company like Rackspace. And finally, you have a hybrid cloud. A hybrid is the best of both worlds. You kind of have the, there's two types of this. Type one is you have select applications in a private cloud. Others are set up in a public cloud model. The overall environment is mixed. Or a type two hybrid is you have specific solutions in private with a tie into the public and even, and even in the demand ex exceeds capacity and need a quote unquote spillover. So how is cloud delivered? Well, obviously in different ways. There's on-premise, there's managed services, and there's cloud services. Three, three different types of ways data can be delivered. So there's a private cloud. You know, a private cloud is, you know, the analogy is you buy your own house, right? So when you have a private cloud, you these services are in an infrastructure maintained on a private network. These clouds offer the greatest level of security and control, but they require the company to still purchase and maintain all the software and all the infrastructure, which reduces your cost savings. And it's very similar to owning your own home. You are responsible for all the maintenance. A private cloud is the obvious choice when your business is your data and your applications. Therefore, control and security are paramount. It's also the best obvious choice when your business is part of an industry that must conform to strict security and data privacy issues. Or when your company is large enough to run a next generation cloud data center efficiently and effectively on its own. To complicate things, the lines between private and public clouds are blurred. For example, some public cloud companies are now offering private versions of the public clouds. Some companies that only offer private cloud technologies are now offering public versions of those same capabilities. Another example of managed services over the hybrid cloud is similar to owning a condo. All right, so you own it, um, you're, you're responsible for some upkeep on it, but you know you still have a lot of things that are maintained, for example, a grounds crew or building maintenance, but you know, you're responsible for things that are interior to your home, like cooking, cleaning, those types of things. It offers, you know, a variety of both. Then you have a full public cloud, very, very similar to a hotel, right? So in this world, everything's taken care of for you. You have all of your infrastructure, all of your applications, everything is 100% taken care of for you. You have no security, no administration. You basically just log in every single month or every single day, excuse me. You know, and this is a perfect example of this would be, you know, an application somewhere as email, right? Everybody needs to be able to have access to it instantaneously. Um, it had burst capacities. You need to be able to test and develop application code, those types of things. Um, another example of people using public cloud technologies is um, when you have co-development teams or collaboration products or, um, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of ad hoc software development. These are very, very similar. A lot of your sales force, um, technology as you're using this. One concern with these is that many IT department executives are very concerned about public cloud. And the reason is security and reliability. Um, they want to go with what they know. They're, they're comfortable with an on-premise. Um, so if you, if you want to move to the public cloud world, take the extra time to ensure that you have security and governance issues well planned. Or the short-term cost savings could turn into a long-term right. So what type of workloads run in the cloud? Well, like we mentioned before, there's several different te technologies, just like there's several different kinds of applications that you use on the internet. Um, you can use operating systems, such as Windows Server, 
and Linux. You can use hypervisors such as VMware and Citrix. Several database technologies you know, are accessible through the cloud, including SQL, MySQL, and Big Data. And then specifically some IBM analytics software such as BI, SPSS Modeler, uh, TM1, and Watson Analytics. So let's you know go over a couple of different types of you know we talked about different types of cloud. So what are the different kinds of services offered on the cloud? One is infrastructure as a service. This is the lowest building block for the cloud. It's the hardware server IT folks are used to buy and configure and manage. So how does it work? Well, as I mentioned, this is where the developers and system administrators get the CPU storage, network connectivity, and other resources to run their applications. Basically, you're running space. This process take away the paint away from dealing with and managing new raw infrastructure. This can be done in two different ways. One, you can have a dedicated server. Um, it'd be a monthly expenditure, but you no longer have to deal with the management and maintenance. It's expert statistics indicate that upfront cost of hardware is only about 20%, leaving the other 80% of costs coming from the management and maintenance, give or take, obviously. Um, the point is valid. Or you could have a utility model. So you can deploy a server in the cloud and it can be spun up or down very quickly. Cloud providers offer robust control panels, easy to select server images like Linux, Windows, those types of things. And in many cases, a robust API is available allowing you to make necessary changes to better suit you if needed. So the next one is a platform as a service. You know, a server provider managed servers, they, you, know, you can house all of your applications. So example, you're hosting an IBM DB2 database in the cloud. Your customer provides database software and you know, or you, you provide the database software and the data and the service providers do all the rest. You're buying a working server complete with an operating system. Another might be, um, you know, very similar to, you know, a, a virtual environment, much like you use VM today. I right? mean, many companies, have an array of servers of which they've established VM uh, allocated servers upon, and they have those platforms, but they're having to maintain those. If you have a platform as a service, you no longer have to do that. It's managed for you. Another is software as a service. Well, this can be, you know, again, taking the next step up of the scale, is this is where a lot of developers and system administrators can work and develop software, develop applications, um, develop a lot of reporting, and be able to instantly go up and access all of their data. Additionally, all of your users can instantly log in, um, have quick access in a skilled environment. For example is, you know, again, email. Or if you have applications, um, you know, many companies use Salesforce and they log in, boom, I have all my data there. It's easy to get into. It's quick. It's fast. I have no performance issues, no slow running reports, no data, slow data load times. And, you know, again, very low total cost of ownership. I don't have to hire staff to exist and maintain and ramp up again. When my, my company grows, it's rapidly scalable. All right, we're using more space, boom, and just add a couple more you know, processors to the mix. So it's very elastic. We can talk about elastic computing. I've been using the word elastic a lot. What does that mean? Well, you really only pay for what you need, right? Take back the example of, of Amazon. They're really paying for all the infrastructure that they only really need for three months. Their other remaining nine months, they're, they're able to, you know, rent it out. Well, in a cloud system, you're able to ramp up or ramp down and only pay for what you need at that time. So 
you know, how is it, you know, maintained to a cost of a traditional system? Well, you've got your upfront cost of a traditional system, but you have to pay that every single time. With a cloud system, you might have a little bit upfront cost um, because you're having to pay, you know, a little extra for, you know, the, the service. But on a monthly recurring basis, this drops. Uh, it turns into an operating expense instead of a capital expense, for example. Um, this means that many people like to use it a lot better. It's a lot more flexible. So this is a very common graphic. If you worked with LPA, had cloud conversations, I'm sure you've seen this before. You've probably seen it through, through IBM before. It's a busy slide. There's a lot of information on it. But for those of you that are not familiar with cloud, this is a fantastic graphic. You know, the reason is there's lots of work in managing any application. And for decades, the only option was to do it yourself. That required staff, hardware, training, maintenance, and much, much more. Well, cloud is partially about this transfer of effort from on-premise to cloud. Look at extremes at the far left and the far right. This transfer of the full stack of hardware support and application and the ownership shifts from to IBM and not to worry. We've done this work for years with thousands of clients. Unlike other BI vendors who subcontract this work to third parties and avoid the difficult security and compliance or the privacy details, be confident that this work will be done by IBM and its partners. Additionally, IBM is the only BI vendor who's been managing and building data centers. This delivers a greater control for IT executives and they work with one vendor. Okay, so what are some frequently asked questions in the cloud? You know, so how does the current work task on premise today work in that cloud? Well, a couple, a few of these things are security, backups and restores, and remote access. We get asked these constantly. For security, it varies by the option. With the infrastructure as, as a service, the user is responsible for security. With a platform as a service, the application security is actually the user's responsibility. And then finally, with the software as a service, all security is managed through the application software itself. There's no direct access to the operating system. So for example, if you use Cognos BI on the cloud, you would still log into the application much like you do today and do you know, administer all the security there. Okay, backup and restores. All the data is automatically updated in the cloud and the user does not have to worry about this concern at all. Boom, it's done. It's already part of the service. So for remote access, this actually varies by option. Typically, remote access is granted to virtual machines or VMs through client software like Windows RDP, which is remote desktop, or browser access. So let's we'll spend a few minutes talking about the growing business analytics SaaS portfolio at IBM. We'll speak strictly about software as a service. Obviously, there's quite a few technologies available. IBM is at the forefront and one of the industry leaders in cloud technology. So let's spend a few, few minutes talking about this. Today's speed is not just about the technology being fast. It's also about how fast you can get solutions up and running. So currently today, we're delivering SaaS solutions that actually help you accelerate adoption by users, speed time to value, and break down organizational silos. IBM has and will continue to make significant investments in their SaaS portfolio designed for a range of different users. So notable solutions of these, and all these solutions are provided by LPA, by the way, include Watson Analytics, and this is used to help business users discover their insight into their data. Also is IBM Cognos BI on the cloud, or SPSS Model on the cloud, or you know, Cognos TM1 on the cloud. So all of these are currently, you know, many of you users are using it on premise. You had some, maybe some cloud aspirations, not quite sure how to get there, what the best next step is. 
Well, we here at LPA have actually been working with quite a few of our clients in fleshing out their best needs. And what makes sense is it makes sense to go to the cloud. And what's their best best move? Is it a hybrid approach? Is it full private? Um, and I would encourage you to reach out to us and talk with us. Have a conversation. See if what makes sense for you. So we'll touch base on a few of these. So Cognitive BI on the cloud. Um, it's actually hosted and single and multi-tenancy. Um, you're able to do it per subscriber, per user, and it has a full functionality of BI across dashboards, interactive reports, ad hoc, and you actually can use active reports via web or the mobile capabilities. You have full capabilities of your BI environment without all the struggles of infrastructure, um, configuration, performance, right? I mean, many times people have written reports and they, they struggle with performance issues. Move over to SPSS on the cloud, speaking SPSS Golden. So this is very similar to, to Model or Gold on premise, for those of you who know it. And it actually brings predictive analytics and predictive intelligence for people. And it provides a wide range of advanced technologies, including text analytics, social analytics, decision management and optimization. It's obviously a hosted environment and has fast employment, very flexible, and again, SaaS offering, subscription pipe prices. So you don't have to make this huge, large upfront software investment. You pay as you go. Watson Analytics on the cloud. This is a new buzzword. I mean, it's, it's hot. You know, people are talking about Watson. Well, it's, you know, very much a cognitive, predictive, and visual analytics, easy to use service. You can do data preparation, quick automated intelligence. I mean, we always kind of say informally, like, hey, you get to grab some data, throw it in there, and you spin up some data, and you get some quick visualizations and dashboards and analytics right at your disposal of your fingertips so you can do something with it. Finally, oh, there's TM1 on the cloud. Many of you are existing TM1 customers doing budgeting, forecasting, planning. Again, imagine taking that whole model and moving it off of a hardware server. You're not having to worry about memory space and I'm building my, my queues, my models, and I've used X amount of RAM and you know, my turbo integrator flows are slow. Um, it takes care of all those types of things. Additionally, the cloud offering for TM1 has the new version of CAFE and it has mobile access capabilities and you have full web capabilities and you can use, for example, TM1 contributor on your iPad. There's no lack of functionality in the cloud offering versus on-premise. Thank you for attending today's webinar.